Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one. Our rare is just a temple. Fine card, but not gonna first pick it. Aerialist is excellent, especially with a bit of uh, synergy. I've got the mask, which is great. And the red decks are uh, usually quite good. Elementals are good, so mask is a good place to start. There's also Cloudkin Seer as arguably the best common in the set, and also puts us in blue in elementals. We've got a rabbit bite, which is great. Shaman is great. So this pack is pretty stacked, despite the rare not being amazing. So Aerialist might be. A card with more potential than, let's say, a Cloudkin Seer, but does require you to build around it a little bit more. And then the Cloudkin keeps us a bit more flexible, we could end up in a Flyer deck, we could end up in an Elemental deck, and this card's still gonna be good. And I think I prefer Cloudkin over Mask of Immolation. So yeah, we'll take the Cloudkin Seer. Alright, I mean, it's not that by picking Cloudkin Seer we can't move into black for a Gravedigger, for example. Uh, Troll's fine, but I think I prefer Gravedigger. And then I guess Sleep Paralysis is worth mentioning too, keeps us in the same color. While it's not the most exciting removal spell, it does get the job done against bigger threats. And then there's a Bone Splinters, which also plays well in this grindy black deck with Gravediggers and Sanitarium Skeletons. I think I like Gravedigger enough over Paralysis that I'll take it here. Alright, and speaking of Sanitarium Skeleton, there it is. I do think this card is quite good. Definitely top 3 best black commons, alongside probably Thief and Murder. What else do we have? Angel Vitality could have been okay if we went down the black-white kind of life gain path with the Aerialist. Isolation's fine, but don't need to prioritize it here. There's another troll. Siphon would be okay. But I think I'm just gonna go with the skeleton here. Just such an important card in this deck. There is a chance that the skeleton wheels. Not sure if the bots have been adjusted, because skeleton used to go pretty late, even saw it like 13th, 14th pick. In which case we could maybe risk it and take Siphon instead. But it is a gamble. I think our deck will probably need Skeleton more than it needs Siphon. I guess we'll risk it and just take Siphon hoping to wheel Skeleton. It's close though. Can stick to black here with a Yorox Fen Lurker. This card is excellent, gives us an early play, making the opponent exile a card. Even better than discarding. And then gives us a body to maybe pump up with the ability or sacrifice to a Bone Splinters. And then maybe get it back with a Gravedigger later. Uh, Soul Salvage would be a nice one to wheel, another Siphon would be good, but I'll go with the Fen Lurker. Alright, now I can pick up the Soul Salvage. Also want to keep an eye on how many Fairy Miscreants we could potentially get, since if we can get like 4 plus, then this becomes a real card. But for now I'm taking the Soul Salvage stick to black, which seems pretty open. And well, well there's another Sanitarium Skeleton, definitely taking that. A uh, Metropolis Sprite would have been a decent pickup as well. There's Vile and Bow to go with the Weaponsmith, but I'll take Skeleton. And not much here. I guess we're mostly mono black, so the Diamond Knight could be serviceable. Not too excited about any of these other cards. And I guess now I'll take Sprites. Again, we're not super committed to blue if we open some insane rare in a different color, we can just move out and then stick to black and whatever color we end up in. But I'm not gonna miss out on a Feral Abomination. Overcome, probably not at its best with this grindy black control deck that we're trying to make. Dawning Angel could have a bit of synergy if we end up in a black-white life gain deck. We already have Agonizing Siphon. But I think the ship has sailed on that, and it's not like the Angel's such a, an amazing card that we can't pass up on it. Yeah, Black Green is a fine archetype, but it's usually more of a grindy deck. 
The Ferocious Pup could end up in blank green since it provides a bit of sacrifice fodder and Ferocious Pup also plays well with Overcome. But typically speaking, Overcome wants to be in a more aggressive, like red-green deck that tries to just play a bunch of creatures and beat down. So here we could take a Barony Vampire, a scan of Mediocre Filler in case we don't end up with enough playables. There's a Soul Mender for maybe a Life Gain deck. Inspire Charger for trying to be more aggressive, but I don't think that's what our deck is trying to do. Could take a Speculative Soul Mender just in case. Probably not going to need the Barony Vampire at the end of the day. And then I could speculate on a Foot Soldier or take an Isolation. We are seeing some pretty late white cards, so it could be that white is open. Probably just take Isolation for now. And then I'll take this bow in case we end up with a Weaponsmith. Crab is not an especially high pick in this format. And uh, Captain also more for a Go White deck, which we're probably not going to end up as. And I guess I'll take a Sentry. Alright, so we picked up some late white cards, not especially looking to be white, since it's probably one of the weaker colors in M20 Draft. But if we open some white bomb, then we can kind of reconsider. But for now, we're solidly in black, and then potentially blue as well. And the Stone Golem could be playable if we end up with a Weaponsmith or two to help us cast it. Well, we open a pretty good white card here. Hanged Executioner is quite excellent. Gives us two different threats. A removal spell built into a creature as well. And if we can rebuy it from the graveyard if it dies with like a Gravedigger, that's a nice value proposition as well. Although it does exile itself if we use the ability, so we can't use the ability and then get it back. But if it dies, then we can. Howling Giant's a nice curved topper. Although we don't have a strong reason to be green. Pattern match or salt as well. Happy to have this in almost every deck. And if you take it early, you can kind of build around it so you have at least a couple matches. I'm a fan of Octoprofit as well. Salt 4 drop. Rabbit bites. Nice removal spell. But yeah, I think I'm gonna take the Executioner and then we might end up in white after all. So the Isolation. The Sentry, maybe Soulmander with life gain synergies could get there. Although now we open a Dungeon Geist, which again pulls us back into blue. And you know, we're not committed to white here. We could still pivot back into blue if we wanted to. Since Dungeon Geist is quite strong. Don't think I'm gonna end up in Asper Colors. I guess technically the Executioner is splashable. So we could be blue, black, splash, white for Executioner but I'm not looking to be a three-color deck. Any other cards in this pack worth mentioning? There's some playable cards here, but nothing that I want to take over the Dungeon Geists. All right, well, seeing some nice black cards here. Blood for Bones is great, especially alongside cards like Sanitarium Skeleton and Tierox Fan Lurker. Blood Soaked Altar can be a decent win condition in this type of deck where we have all the sacrifice fodder so that's also a card I'm interested in. The Vulture can fill up the graveyard and enable some graveyard synergies with Soul Salvage and Gravedigger. So a lot of good black cards. And no white cards I'm too interested in. So yeah, this is probably a pick between Blood Soaked Altar and Blood for Bones. I'm not sure which one we prefer. We're still not sure which our second color is going to be. This uh, The next few packs are kind of going to determine whether we end up in blue or in white. So far blue looks a little bit better, both Cloud Seer and Dungeon Geists, but I'm uh, pretty committed to black since all the black cards are quite strong. So if I take the Blood for Bones, plays well with a Fun Lurker Skeleton, we can maybe get back a Dungeon Geist or a Gravedigger. If we take Altar, it gives us a nice late game plan. Ideally we have a little bit of life gain to offset the life loss from the Altar. So far we have Siphon, yeah, this is a very close decision, both kind of uncommons that play well with some of the cards we already have. All right, we'll take the Blood for Bones. Winged Words looks decent. We have a Cloudkin Seer and a Dungeon Geist to synergize with it. And even just a Divination is fine. 
Uh, Marauder Sacks can be okay, although we're not necessarily this creature heavy deck that wants a Marauder Sacks. Could take our first Undead Servant and start picking up a few more. I think I still take the Winged Words for now. Oh yeah, we also have the Metropolis Sprite, so three flyers already. Well, I can just take another Winged Words. Octo Prophet would also be nice. Although we do have a decent number of 4-drops that we can play already. So I'm not too worried about Curve and needing an Octo Prophet. So sure, I'll take another Winged Words here. Cryptic Caves can also be nice, but I think I prefer the Winged Words for now. And then I'm, now I can take the Sleep Paralysis as a nice removal spell. Nothing else in the pack that I want. So we seem pretty committed to blue-black at this point. So let's remove the white cards. So pick one in pack two, we took the Executioner. Didn't really give up on anything too amazing. Worth speculating on white just in case that ended up uh, being the place to be. And then Stone Golem, not too excited about it. If we pick up a Weaponsmith, I can consider it. And then for now, I guess I'll take the Denizen, probably not main decking the gates. And if we pick up some more blue cards, then this could be kind of a win condition. Doesn't look amazing in our deck, we have very few blue creatures. I guess we can also mill ourselves to enable the graveyard for Gravedigger and Soul Salvage. I think I'm off-white at this point. I'm no longer gonna speculate on the Assault. Blood Burglar, fine to drop. And then now I can take the Octoprophets. And Blade Brand could be fine. Don't think I want a second Bone to Ash. One is already questionable. Alright, another Denizen or another Blade Brand. We're not the best Blade Brand deck. This is much better if we have some Audacious Thieves that we want to give Death Touch. Still okay with like a Skeleton or a Fen Lurker on defense. Um, but second Denizen maybe could do some things. Might want a Marauder Sacks. I guess I could have considered taking that uh, blue-white dual land in case we wanted to splash Executioner. Not sure if that's even worth it, even if we did get one or two fixing lands here. Alright, well, now with the Dread Presence we definitely don't want to splash, since this incentivizes us further to have as many swamps in the deck as possible. Meteor Golem would be nice, um, Evolving Wilds could be a nice wheel as well, another Skeleton of course would be great, but that's an easy Dread Presence. And another Cloud Seer seems excellent, pairs well with our two copies of Winged Words. Hoping to wield that uh, Vulture, which would be nice as well. Nothing here that I'm too interested in. I guess Necromancer is okay. Since we don't have many 5-drops, we have a whole bunch of 4s. So having Necromancer at 5 is fine. Just adds a bit of power and toughness to the board. Could pick up the third Denizen. Don't think we need this as our game plan, since we have quite a few flyers here between the Sprite, Double Seer, Dungeon Geists, and now a Dread Presence, a nice win condition as well. So I don't think we'll need to rely on Denizen to win the game, whereas Necromancer just gives us a decent play on 5. Ooh, wow. This is a stacked pack. Definitely gonna take the Sailor, but another Skeleton would have been nice. So now we've got two Skeletons that we can hope to wheel. Don't have any Bone Splinters yet to go with the Skeleton, but even by itself, Skeleton's nice. Just being able to block larger creatures over and over. And yeah, there's a Bone Splinter, so good time to pick that one up. Hoping to wheel one of the Skeletons out of the previous packs. Sorcerer would have been a decent 2-drop, just giving us an early blocker. That also turns into a win condition. Evolving Wilds for fixing is nice, especially alongside a Dread Presence. But I'll take the Splinters. And a second Soul Salvage sounds okay. Probably don't need a second Octo Prophet. Don't have any Pattern Matchers that require duplicates. And we have a lot of action at 4 already. Let's take the Soul Salvage. And alright, 
and got another skeleton. We did open a second Tranquil Cove, but yeah, so if we didn't open the Dread Presence, then with like two Tranquil Coves and maybe an Evolving Wilds, we could have justified splashing the Hanged Executioner, but as it sits, there's no need to. And it's probably a bit too late for the Fairy Miscreants. Don't want to play this as a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one flyer by itself. We're not going to open any Weaponsmiths, so no real reason to take Vile, since I don't think I want to play that by itself. But I guess there's nothing else I really want. And then I could take the Evolving Wilds now. I could take a bow just to have bow in our deck. We would only have two without a Weaponsmith, so that doesn't seem too exciting. If we did have a Weaponsmith, then the bow strategy could be a thing. If we can search up multiples and kind of shoot down low toughness creatures from the opponent, we have multiple flyers to make sure we can keep attacking with a bow equipped. But I guess for now I'll just take a Blade Brand. Another one. Alright. Doesn't look like we're wheeling one of the skeletons. Not Revolving Wilds is nice though. Alright, so... Ended up with an okay deck. A little bit light on removal. Would have loved maybe another Bone Splinters, maybe a Murder. But our threats are pretty decent, we've got a ton of card draw with double Cloudkin, double Winged Words, double Soul Salvage with a lot of uh, grindy elements here, Blood for Bones as well. And then the Dread Presence of course, a great pickup, Spectral Sailor, so we've got a ton of card draw, just a bit light on actual removal. So don't need Bow, probably don't need Axe, and Vials and maybe, just kind of as a way to interact. Probably don't need the Denizen. Diamond Knights could be okay, we do have a lot of black cards. Don't think I'm playing the Bone to Ash, since we're pretty bad at keeping up mana for counter spells. And we have so many 4 drops already. And then probably don't need 3 Blade Brands. I could play one or two, since I guess that's a way alongside like a skeleton to take out a larger creature after blocking it. So Blade Brands is serviceable. Diamond Knight is also maybe. Could also shave a Soul Salvage if we think we don't need it. Since we do have a lot of card advantage with the Winged Words and the Cloudkin and the Sailor, so we might not need a second Soul Salvage considering we already have a Blood for Bones and a Gravedigger. If we have an opening hand with multiple soul salvages, things could get a little awkward. Because normally soul salvage kind of acts as our card advantage mechanism in the late game, but we already have a ton of card draw mechanisms, so we probably don't need to prioritize the second soul salvage as much. So I think I'm shaving one of them. And then I think I still want 17 lands. So it's between the Vile and the Diamond Knight. I guess. Diamond Knight does synergize quite well with Sanitarium Skeleton, since we can keep getting it back. Alright, we'll play the Knights. Yeah, our deck looks pretty decent. Our removal is Paralysis, Bone Splinters, Siphon, and then we also have Double Blade Brand to go with Double Sanitarium Skeleton that can also block for a while. And then plenty of recursion and card draw. A little bit light on creatures, but we can get these creatures back a few times. Between the Soul Salvage and the Blood for Bones and the Gravedigger, we'll be able to recur some of our more important creatures, like the Dungeon Guys and the Cloud Concealer, and of course the Skeleton's gonna keep coming back over and over again. And then looking at our mana distribution, can probably afford to add one Swamp for the Dread Presence. So we've got nine Swamp, seven Islands, and an Evolving Wilds. Looks decent, we only need double blue for Dungeon Geist anyway. Alright, this seems fine. Nice opening hands. Can fetch up a Swamp to get access to turn to Fenlurker if we wanted to. Up against Black Whites.
Could wait on the fan lurker, since we're not really in a hurry, we can make another 2-drop here. And this lines up a little bit better against Chaplin. I guess it's reasonable. Like, the fan lurker is good on turn 2, and then great if the opponent has like 1 or 2 cards left in hand. Because uh, if we played very early in the game, the opponent doesn't necessarily know whether or not they need to value additional lands in hand or not. And they might discard a spell. In the mid-game, then the opponent might have a few extra lands they don't mind discarding. And then in a late game, they could be holding some bombs that they weren't able to cast yet. I'll block. And a foot soldier. Alright. It's gonna grab some more foot soldiers, presumably. Just a one-off. So they could just have two foot soldiers or have another one in hand already. Don't mind playing the Cloud Conceer, don't mind attacking and trading. Ooh, Dread Presence. So if we can wait until turn 5 to play Dread Presence into a Swamp, that would be great. And then turn 4 we can play a Dungeon Geist, perhaps. Alright, that's another target for Dread Presence, more Swamps. So the guys could lock down the Chaplain, or can lock down the Raptor, so we attack right away. But the Raptor can easily die to the Dread Presence, whereas the Chaplain does not. Could also save the guys, since it's kind of our only big removal spell for larger creatures. And do something else instead, like a Winged Words or a Fun Lurker. I guess we can both Fun Lurker and Winged Words here, thanks to the discount. So yeah, that probably looks better. Alright, gets rid of Foot Soldier. Ooh. Well, it's a Dread Presence Mirror here. And Dungeon Guys, not a great answer to Dread Presence, sadly. So I'll just take three. I can attack with the Fun Lurker. If they take it, then I can finish off Dread Presence. It's probably not happening though. Opponent kills Fun Lurker. Let's just play it and kill the Raptor. We do have a Gravedigger and Soul Salvage to get back our Dread Presence. The opponent attacking might indicate that they have one as well. If we could get our opponent tapped out and then exile the Dread Presence from the graveyard with Necromancer once we trade, that would be ideal. But I don't think we can trade right now, since if they get theirs back, they just snowball advantage, whereas we don't. I could just jump block, I could just take three. Given that we're at 20, I'll just take three, I think. Well, Bone Splinters is a perfect answer. Now we get to Bone Splinters and Necromancer away the Dread Presence right away, so they can't recur it. And if I attack with a Skeleton and I block with a Chaplain, I can also shoot it down. So do I attack first, or do I play my Swamp first in case they have a combat trick on the Chaplain? I'm probably okay just drawing a card with the Dread Presence now. So play Swamp, draw a card. I guess I could attack first now that we still have mana untapped. Since that makes it less likely that the opponent tries to go for some sort of combo trick. Alright, they go for it anyway. Blade Brands, fair enough. So we'll Bone Splinters. Into Necromancer. And get that exiled. Alright, so... At some point we might find a Gravedigger or Soul Savaged, or even a Blood for Bones to get back our Dread Presence. And we dealt with the opponents. So we want to hang on to the Swamp as long as we can. Could Dungeon Geist a Raptor. It's probably fine. Uh, 
and the sprite to the board. So now our smaller flyers can keep attacking. Ooh, they've got their own Necromancer, so that's gonna get rid of our Dread Presence here. Alright, so we've got a very similar game plan. They could have also gotten rid of the Skeleton, I guess. Maybe that would have been better. Since they get kind of value guaranteed, whereas... With the Dread Presence, they're kind of gambling that we have some recursion. Which, I mean, in black is pretty common, but still. So the Flyers can keep attacking. Don't really have a great reason to trade Necromancers. And I think I should play my land since we have another Winged Words in our deck. We could get into a situation where we Winged Words into a bunch of spells and we want access to more mana. Herald of the Sun could be an issue. Alright, there's a Winged Words, so tap one of each. Land, Blood for Bones. So we can Blood for Bones back or Dread Presence, sadly. That would have been a pretty nice play here. What can we do? I guess if I sacrifice the Dungeon Geist and then put it back in play, I can tap down the Heralds to enable an attack. How big of an attack is it? Since we get in for 4 damage with our Flyers. Could even send some of the ground creatures. I could attack first, they block the Geists. And then we can tap down the Heralds. That's probably fine as well. Yeah, let's attack. I think I send everyone. Alright, so that happens. Pump Sprite. Get them for six. And then... Blood for Bones on the guys, I think. So this goes into play, and then Necromancer goes to in, into our hand. And pass a turn. Guess I'll keep the Swamp in hand in case of an opposing Fan Lurker. Could have also done it the other way around, put the Necromancer in play and then the Geist in hand. Both are reasonable. Yeah, we could have tapped slightly differently and then still been able to cast the Fan Lurker after getting it back. I think I would rather get back Necromancer as it's a bit more impactful. Making two bodies when you point at uh, two life. Seems quite nice. Alright, nice uh, play here. Pumping the guys to then cast Isolation. It's not gonna save the opponent though. It reminds me of proliferating in War of the Spark Draft onto the opponent's creature just so you can then get rid of it with the Wanderer. Yeah, this was a pretty sweet game. Lots of back and forth. We both had Dread Presence and Necromancer. All right, so we're off to a good start. Alright, nice hand. Turn 1, Sailor. Turn 2, draw 2 cards with Winged Words. It's a good start. And Dread Presence, so want to save additional Swamps if we can. Have to play the first one to get the Dread Presence in play anyway, since we don't have any other black dual lands, for example that we could draw in the meantime. So we'll attack for one and draw two cards. And also want to make sure to play the Swamp in case we pick up a Fan Lurker that we might want to play. Alright, Diamond Knight a good pickup here since we didn't have another 3-drop available. 
That's probably going to be naming black. It's a black knight, almost. Thief. Alright, so I can just run out uh, Octo Prophets. Probably want to wait on Dread Presence until we can Dread Presence and play Swamp right away. We don't pump the Knights by not playing a black card here, but that's probably still fine. And then we can scry into a Swamp with the Octo Prophets. Both good pickups here, put the Swamp first. And then the Siphon, I think. Attack for one. If they kill Octo Prophets and get an attack in, so be it. Then they're maybe not killing the Dread Presence. And if they have a Cutthroat or a Blade Brand, that's also fine. Growth Cycle instead. So now we can. Still try and kill the thief with our dread presence next turn. That works. And get in for three. Alright, so we've got a nice start here. Ahead on board, we've got a nice value engine going. Can still activate Sailor in the late game if we need to draw some cards. Multiple ways of recurring creatures in hand. So this murder is actually not too bad for us here. Just gonna play the Gravedigger. Playing Necromancer would have also been reasonable since we get... Uh, a little bit more power and toughness for our mana, and we get to exile the thief. But now this opens up a few more plays where if we draw a swamp we can do some things with the Dread Presence. Eh, rabbit Bind kills the knight. And there's a swamp. So I could attack with both, and then if they block Gravedigger finish off Courser, probably just better to siphon it. And then uh, hold the swamp for now. Could also not attack with the Gravedigger and just play Necromancer and next turn Siphon to set up an attack. That's also fine. I guess I like Necromancer a little bit more. Siphon could also go upstairs to burn the opponent out potentially. Scuttlemot an easy target for Dread Presence. So, siphoning the Central Courser lets us get in some good attacks. Or I could just get the Dread Presence out there, kill the Scuttlemot, just attack with the Necromancer. I mean, I could still even attack with everyone, to be honest, after killing Scuttlemot. If they then eat one of our 2 twos, we still get in for 6 damage, put them to 2, and then siphon still lethal. So I guess I kind of like playing Dread Presence here. They might also be splashing a third color, which we take away by killing the Scuttlemot. Opponent could be holding some interaction here, which might change our attack. If they have a pump spell, for example. Does decide to kill the Gravedigger. Do we get to deal 6, or do they have something? Bonus down to 2. So now they would also be dead to another Dread Presence. Land here. Cycles a Blade Brand, which was the card they were holding. And our opponent explodes, alright. Well, we had an excellent start. And our opponent wasn't really able to break serve. Alright, we're on the draw with another decent hand. Drawing Dread Presence every game doesn't hurt. So we're gonna lead with Swamp in case of Fun Lurker. And then probably play Island before we play Second Swamp. The 
don't have a turn two play. Opponent does have a Mastiff. Alright, that's a good one. So, Sanitarium Skeleton plus Blade Brand could easily trade off for a larger creature, for example. I think I'll take two for now, don't need to chum block quite yet. Dread Presence also good at killing two toughness creatures. And the Centaur Courser. Yeah, let's hope to pick up some lands. I could also hang on to this Blade Brand instead of pulling the Cloudkins here. Although Cloudkin also trades for the Pack Mastiff. It's a close call. If we try and go for the Blade Brand and they have some interaction, we could get punished. Let's just play the Cloudkin. It's a bit more mana efficient. Alright, land is good. And now I could also double block Courser if I wanted to. Which is reasonable given our hand. Opponent's down to three cards. Got plenty of powerful cards still in hand. Going for the double block, not ideal if our opponent's holding onto a pump spell. A reason to double block is that Andred Presence can maybe take out the Mastiff. And we don't need to use the Paralysis on the Courser. Reason not to double block, opponent could have a pump spell. And we have a Blade Brand for Courser anyway to combine with the Skeleton. So. I think I'm just going to trade off this Cloudkin for the Mastiff, so we just don't take too much damage. I'm not going to jump with the Skeleton quite yet, in case we want to set a Blade Brand plus Sprite next turn. And um, this way we also don't get wrecked too badly by a Pump Spell. Has another Mastiff, so Glide I blocked. So yeah, we'll wait with the Dread Presence until we pick up a Swamp, hopefully, and then for now we can either Octoprofit or Sprite plus Blade Brand. I guess I like Sprite plus Blade Brand. Nah, it's close. Playing Octoprofit might discourage an attack with Massive, although they could still pump it, but then that takes away their entire turn. They could be holding some 4 or 5 mana plays that they want to make instead, and Octoprofit can kind of stack a Swamp on top to set up a play for next turn, and uh, it can also just trade for the Center Courser. Yeah, we'll play the Octoprofit, hold on to the Blade Brand, can maybe trade off for a, an even larger creature the opponent still has in hand. Something like a Vorse Claw being a prime example. These cards are both okay. Necromancer adds a lot of power and toughness to the board. Uh, I don't think I'll need Siphon as much, just because if we keep Necromancer we'll have plenty of power and toughness to trade off for smaller creatures. It's not like we're facing any flyers out of red-green where we need the Siphon. And I would like to draw a Swamp at some point. But I don't think I'm turning down the Necromancer. Since it already has food in the graveyard. Ooh, Vivian. With the arc bow at my side, I can't lose a fight. Well, that's an issue. So now they can start fighting things, they can start adding counters and get out of range of Dread Presence. So we've got a very small window here to potentially answer this Vivian. Otherwise, she's gonna get out of hand. Can maybe tap down a blocker with a sleep paralysis to threaten Vivian. Massive attacks, we'll take it. And then I can Paralysis the Courser, attack Vivian for four, then Vivian can no longer fight, can still plus, and then kind of keep the Massive back. And then, I mean, if we draw a Swamp, the Dread Presence could finish off Vivian, or we can just start uh, deploying Necromancer and Sprite to try and take her out, plus Blade Brand could also do some things. I think that's a play. So yeah, ideally we pick up a Swamp, and we can easily take out Vivian. And reduce the profits. And of course if they keep the Massive back, we could also set up Blade Brand. This'll be fun to watch. Gets in for five. No Swamp, but a Cloud can see her. The fact that Vivian gains uh, Trample as well is kind of uh, relevant here. So I can play the Cloudkin and the Metropolis Sprite. Opponent can hit us for like a whole bunch, since they can also pump the Massive besides putting a counter on it. 
So I might have to keep the skeleton back and then just kill Vivian with our flyers next turn. Although, if Vivian goes to 3, then we need to attack with both flyers to kill her. How does playing Necromancer sound? Not great, since it doesn't even double block to kill Mastiff. Could also play Cloudkin and keep a Bladebrand to block and trade for the Mastiff. We'll see what we draw first here. Fun Lurker that we can't play anymore. Could have tapped differently, but I might have wanted to play the Sprite. I think I just hang back and set up the Blade Brands. Might be a bit greedy. My my, how you've grown. So yeah, we have to block with both, otherwise they can double pump Mastiff and we would die. So we're not dealing with the Vivian here, sadly. But because of the trample, this could deal 9 damage. So just blocking with the skeleton is not good enough. Points pumping. So at least they'll be tapped out. Hmm, interesting. So they're not pumping, so they might have another play lined up here. Well, let's find out. Alright, so we're at two. Hopefully no follow-up creatures. Ooh, Central Courser. Alright, it's gonna be a difficult uh, road ahead of us. We did pick up a Swamp, so now we could Dread Presence, play Swamp, deal two to Vivian, gain a bit of life. Yeah, it's a trample that Vivian gives that's kind of the issue, otherwise we could just jump block forever with a Skeleton. I think I'm kind of forced to play the Necromancer here, though, just to add the most... Stats to the board. And I think I'm saving the Swamp for Dread Presence. It doesn't feel great, but now at least we've got some blocks on the Courser. Buccaneer. Yeah, that's a problem. A Haste creature here means that Vivian's Plus gives them two lethal threats. Yeah, Vivian's pretty busted. So they've got 7 power of trample, we've got 5 toughness, we take 2. Oh well. We had a shot here, not sure if we could have gotten there with some slightly different decisions. We were like a little bit short of killing this Vivian. Yeah, I guess there was that one turn where had we drawn a swamp we could have gone Dread Presence, kill Vivian, and then we would have been in okay shape. Yeah, the Agonizing Siphon could have potentially dealt damage to Vivian, although I think it made sense not to keep it. Alright, another opening hand with Dread Presence. Probably gonna keep. Can fetch up an island. Does mean we can play a potential turn to Fun Lurker, but it's probably fine. Let's keep playing out our islands for now. Can pump Sprite and then cycle a Blade Brand. Probably want to hang on to Blade Brand against the Mono Green deck so far. They might have some big creatures we need to deal with, although we do have both Sleep Paralysis and Splinters to deal with large creatures. So we might just want to cycle this just so we Make sure we hit our land drops. We'll see what they play here. Well, that's a pretty good way to spend our Blade Brand, potentially. If they decide to fight, they could just make it big, in which case we can uh, still uh, kill it with Splinters or Paralysis. But that's a nice Blade Brand. Alright, there's Fun Lurker. Don't mind Octoprofit here. It's 
Set up a swamp. Could keep Island to still cast the Necromancer. But if we don't have a swamp on top, I can still run out the Dread Presence. Even without a swamp against Mono Green, they're not gonna have a ton of ways to kill the Dread Presence. Unless they go like Big Creature into Rabbit Bite. And I would rather not flood out. Since we don't have any card draw engines in hand. Force Claw is a big one, but we do have answers. And there's the Swamp. I could just Paralysis right away, hold the Swamp. Although the fact that we use Paralysis instead of Bone Splinters means that if they do have Rabbit Bite, which they're pretty likely to have, especially given Season of Growth in their deck, they can still Rabbit Bite using the Force Claw. So not actually killing the Force Claw does have its drawbacks. So I could also go Fen Lurker into Bone Splinters. We lose out on a bit of value on the Dread Presence that way. Yeah, I think so. See what they've got. Alright, so they're playing blue as well. Good to know. What's going on here? Well, I can attack and then if they block I can finish off the Druid with the Dread Presence at least. Seems okay, and if they take it then Dread Presence can kill Vivian. At least Vivian's not too effective if there's no creatures in play. So hopefully that stays that way, plus we have a Sleep Paralysis as well. So we should be able to deal 6 to Vivian next turn. Yeah, opponent minuses Vivian, gets a creature out of the sideboard. Can't be anything too amazing, since it would probably main deck. The with Their best creatures. Alright, they had a backup Vorse Claw, not the worst here. Get some value out of our Dread Presence. And Skeleton checks the Vorse Claw nicely. Alright, nice. Well, managed to beat this Vivian at least. So we're 1-1 one one against Vivians. Alright, well, I'm not gonna complain. If I can have Dread Presence in each opening hand, I'll uh, definitely take it. We have some other good cards in our deck too, but this is probably the best one. Evolving Wilds can fetch an island, could do that right away, could play Skeleton first. Yeah, I think I'm okay getting the island soon. Could also draw into, like, the sprite that we want to play on turn 2. And then next turn we get to go Sailor plus Skeleton. Winged Words also gets a discount now. Eh, runs out Scorpion. Blood Burglar is not bad either. I think I still like Skeleton plus Sailor here. Although it's easier to sneak these 1-drops in play as opposed to a 2-drop. Eh, that's Burglar. Like, I'm fine if this trades for Scorpion, even though we have Dread Presence as a clean answer to Scorpion as well. Spider, so that blocks the Sailor. Reason not to play Sailor is if our opponent has like a removal spell like a Rabbit Bite for this, and we're not attacking with it anyway for the foreseeable future. I guess reason to play it also is if we have the Winged Words as one of our draw steps. How much does that discount matter in this spot? Not that much. I'll wait. There's a Winged Words.
And then next turn we can see what we want to do. Probably just Octo Prophet. If we find a swamp, we could consider attacking. Spider attacks. That's also reason to like play the sailor is if our opponent starts attacking with the spider, we can maybe chip in for a couple points. Alright, so no lands. I think I like Octoprophet. The Diamond Knight probably wants to be naming black anyway, so we don't miss out on a counter by playing Octoprophet first. Well, those are both decent. Don't think I want to keep Necromancer without the land, but Cloudkin can be too bad. We currently don't have a great solution for this uh, spider. Yeah, maybe I should bottom both. We have a lot of small flyers already, so it's not like the cloud can really add much. And might as well just bottom it and that's kind of like we're drawing the next card right away. Dungeon Geist could be a nice one if we find a second blue source. So for now, what's our plan? Scuttle Mutt also potentially enabling a second color for the opponent. Sadly, we can't kill it with the Dread Presence. That would have been a nice play otherwise. Fine attacking with the Octoprophets. And then I'm probably just playing Diamond Knight, which at this point could also name Blue, since we have Sailor that can grow it right away, Sprite and Geiss. It's unlikely they double block. So if we find an island, we get access to Geists. If we find a swamp, the Dread Presence can start doing stuff. There's a mountain, so they were waiting on their second color, which also explains the pretty aggressive block from the Scorpion on the Blood Burglar. They just were missing a color, so they were afraid of taking too much damage early. Lavakin Brawlers, potential an issue. So this hand wants to find some nice removal spells. Blade Brands would be good as well. And of course, lands. And Gravedigger doesn't have much to dig back. Activating Sailor doesn't sound bad. If we pick up an island, we can play it. If we pick up a swamp, I might hold it. Adding Sprite to the board doesn't do much unless we find an island next turn for the Geists. So all the Flyers can start attacking. Alright, Swamp. So do we play Swamp? I don't think we do. Just hang back for now. Alright, Chandra's pretty good. Could take out the Spectral Sailor here, or the Diamond Knights. And an Island, so... now what? Got a ton of options all of a sudden can attack Chandra with the Octoprophets. If they block with the Lavagin Brawler, I can finish it off with the two damage from Dread Presence. I could also send a Skeleton, which can also maybe open up two damage from Dread Presence being relevant. Probably not sending the Sailor. Does Geist set up anything better? If I Geist the Spider, the Sailor can attack for one. I mean, I could also Geist the Brawler and then Octoprophet gets in there. I think I prefer attacking and then setting up something with the Dread Presence. Could also send a Sailor if they block with the Spider, then can finish it off. Don't know if I want to trade off the Sailor that easily. We'll try this. So there's a bunch of different uh, permutations in which the two damage from Dread Presence could finish off a creature, and it could also just deal two damage to Chandra. Alright, that's fine. So now we get to finish off the Lavakin Brawler, which seems decent. And the two damage from Chandra could take out the Sailor, but then Soul Salvage or Gravedigger could still get it back. Hold on. I'm gonna try something new. So we're not in a bad position. And drawing Swamps is good if the Dread Presence is still alive. And drawing Spells is good too. 
No, they did have a rabbit bite. So dread presence down. Just want to make sure we don't fall too far behind on board here. Since we definitely have the late game engines here with all these skeletons, gravediggers, soul salvages. Just don't want to die in the meantime and maybe take care of this Chandra. So could just dungeon guys a crasher, kill Chandra. That's pretty straightforward. Is there any better play available? Could offer the trades, which is a fine trade, but then Chandra sticks around and that could be problematic. And if they kill the guys, now we can get back guys and drug presence with a single soul salvage, which is pretty nice. Alright, Force Claw. That's kind of the issue with this line, is that now we used Geists instead of keeping it for something bigger, although Sleep Paralysis will do nicely. Also, Force Claw still has Trample, thanks to the Crasher. So that's also an important interaction, but we got bailed out by our top deck here. Can just Sleep Paralysis plus Sprites. And then get in with Geist and I think Octo Prophet can attack as well. If they didn't have the Crasher in play, then we could just chum block Force Claw forever with the Skeleton. So that wouldn't be an issue. And I'm fine getting the Spider out of the way. So now we can maybe get back the Geists and tap down another bigger creature. Ooh, Howling Giant. Well, that's a bigger creature. So they're not making it easy here. Now what? So we definitely want to keep the Octo Prophet to block these two two wolves. Need to find an answer for the Giant and the Crasher. Siphon could kill Crasher, and then Skeleton can jump Giant for the time being. Although I would also like to get some of our cards back from the graveyard. So if I Soul Salvage, Dread Presence and Geist right now, I don't get to replay any of them. I do get to recur a Skeleton from the graveyard, uh, but maybe that's the play. Anything else we want to get? It's possible Sailor's even better than Dread Presence, but... I think I prefer the board presence from the dread presence for now. And then end of turn, get back skeleton if we don't need to pump sprites. So we'll take a bit of a beating here, hopefully no overruns from our opponents here. And then we can lock down the giant next turn. So I guess we could also trade Octoprofit for Crasher. Since now we have both Geist and Dread Presence to block the Tutus. And this makes future Vorse Claws a lot less scary. And a Pattern Matcher, let's see if they can match anything. Matches a Force Claw, that's not what we wanted to see, but at least we got rid of the Crasher. Alright, so we've got a lot of work ahead of us. No Swamp to go with the Dread Presence at the moment. Guys could lock down the Howling Giants, which is probably more relevant than locking down Force Claw, since locking down Giant means the Flyers can actually start attacking at some point in the future. Whereas Force Claw we can just chum block with the Skeleton. So but that's probably step one, and then step two, I can replay Skeleton. We're fine playing out the island here. If they kill the Geists, we could also trade off Sprite for a Wolf or Skullmots. If we pick up some swamps, we can start taking out these tutus with the Dread Presence one by one. If they kill guys, we can also Grave Digger it back once again. I could double block Pattern Matcher with Sprite and Skeleton, bump Sprites. 
Not sure if that's something we have to do here when Siphon answers Spatter Matcher pretty nicely. I could jump with the Skeleton, although I might want to save it for the Vorse Claw, which is coming down now. So I think I'll take three. Since we're gonna need our mana in the next couple turns, so we don't necessarily have the time to recur Skeleton right away. Alright, Swamp is good. So now I can go Dread Presence, play Swamp and Siphon. Kill Scuttlemots. Kill Powder Matcher. Pad our life total a little bit. And I think the Flyers can start attacking. Do want to get them dead at some point. And now we basically have a two turn clock in the air. Ooh, another Thicket Crasher, that's unfortunate. Now I kind of regret using the Siphon since now Vorse Class Trample once again. Second Thicket Crasher. So jumping with Skeleton no longer a great solution. Although we might be able to outrace the Vorse Claw still. The Wolves attack. Any reason to keep Skeleton? If we get a second Skeleton in play, they could double block a Wolf. I guess maybe I should wait. Taking 9 right now, which is a lot. But I probably am not gonna return Skeleton twice and play twice. So I might as well wait and give ourselves more options next turn. Fan Lurker can snipe their last card, which isn't guaranteed to be anything useful. Can Gravedigger do anything? I mean, I guess a play is still Fun Lurker here. And then we can attempt to trade off and then maybe get the guys back once again with the Gravedigger. And what did we get? Just a land to be expected. So I can get back uh, Skeleton, play Skeleton. And then uh, still, let's see, three. I guess we don't have the mana to pump Fun Lurker, I could still pump Sprite. Should have enough toughness to survive, but it's going to be close. Yeah, that uh, Thicket Crasher, definitely a game changer since without Trample, the Vorse Claw would not be an issue at all. Why no attacks? Because we might need all the blockers back on defense to survive. Alright, Vorse Claw attacks. So they're saving the Crasher. So we basically have to try and kill this Vorse Claw since jumping uh, is not a solution. So need to put 7 power in front of it. Sprite could be 2. Skeleton is 4. And then a Dread Presence is 7. I guess that's the straightforward play. Alternatively, I could kind of let the guys die to get it back but I also don't mind having the Howling Giant locked down. Any reason to also block with the Fun Lurker here? Don't think so. If they have any interaction, they kind of mess us up regardless. Alright, so that worked. Center Courser is manageable. Alright, so we're kind of back into it here. Well, let's lead with Winged Words. Swamp Swamp, so getting back Dread Presence with the Gravedigger sounds pretty nice. Which seems slightly better than Sailor at this point. And then I could get back Skeleton, but I can't replay it anyway, so playing the Swamp is mostly to pump Fun Lurker. Uh, can I get an attack in with the Geists? I think so. I can double block the Crasher, chum the Courser, take two. And now that we no longer have Gravedigger, I don't really want to lose the Geists in combat. Did 
This way we don't take any trample damage. So this seems slightly better than Fenlurker and Gravedigger on Crasher, since we don't take any trample. Don't have to jump with the Fenlurker, could take three. Going down to five, how bad is that? Given that we're probably gaining life with a Dread Presence, I guess it could also have like plus one plus one double strike, but then the Wolf would have attacked for sure. Same with Might of the Masses, so I don't expect a pump spell here. Yeah, let's just do it like this. And a tracker. Alright, so I can Dread Presence, play Swamp. Could go upstairs, but I might as well go, let's see, upstairs next turn when the guys can finish them off. And then uh, just kill the wolf for now. And then I can return a skeleton and play it. Yeah, Poda needs to top deck right now. An answer for the guys is kind of how they get back into it. Although double swamp with drug presence can also burn them out. Gift of Paradise. All right, I guess that keeps him alive for a turn. Cloud can a good pickup too. See what we draw first. An island. I think I'm still playing the swamp just to get value out of our dread presence while we can. And just deal two to their face. Attack for three. No relevant attacks with the fun lurker. Six, seven. Can pump it twice, which is not enough to be significant. I guess I could attack with both. And then if uh, Tracker goes in front of Dread Presence and Fenlurker can maybe kill the Druid. I guess that's okay. Is it better than just getting back a bunch of skeletons? Probably. And they're forced to block here. We'll save the Fenlurker, I think. They get one more activation from the tracker for now. Ooh, meter golem. Well, that could have been a problem. Although now they're still dying to both the dread presence, the seer. If they kill the guys here, and we're not in immediate danger at nine life, facing five power. Opponent activates tracker. Not sure what they can find at this point. Another Thicket Crasher, so opponent had a nice deck for Vorsclaw with triple Thicket Crasher giving a Trample. Because without Trample, Vorsclaw is not always the threat you want it to be. With Trample, it's a lot scarier. Yeah, I probably should have considered attacking first before playing the Swamp. That way I could have finished off the Tracker with the two damage from the Dread Presence. Although, to be honest, it might have been correct to just go face with the Dread Presence damage anyway, just because we were kind of on the burn plan at that point. So I might have still pointed to two damage upstairs instead of finishing off the tracker. Either way, 4 and 1, let's keep it up. And decent hands with a nice low curve. And eventually we'll draw into our more expensive cards. Bladebrand also playing nicely with our cheaper creatures. And Leafkin Druid on two. So I can attack if they block I Bladebrand, if they don't block I play a Burglar. Saving Blade Brand against a green deck can be beneficial, since of course they could run out some bigger creatures, but also slowing down their developments is relevant. Opponent seems to be on black green. Fair enough. 
No real need to Winged Words. The reason to Winged Words here is to try and find a 4-mana play, since we don't have one in hand currently. Is it better than developing the Blood Burglar? It's a little bit more mana efficient, I guess. Getting the 2-2 lifelink in play on offense, maybe not too relevant, since it's probably going to get blanked next turn anyway. Yeah, I guess I can buy playing the Winged Words here. Again, saving Swamps for the Dread Presence. Alright. Diamond Knight and Sailor. Sailor is going to be pretty important if this uh, game ends up being quite grindy. And that Servant. Could just run out Diamond Knight, naming Black, and run out Sailor end of turn. Don't really want to trade for the Servant, so I could just take 3 or chump it. Or I can trade and then play the Necromancer on the following turn. In which case I could also consider playing the Burglar to trade off for the Servant. And then next turn have access to the Necromancer. Of course if your opponent has another Servant in hand they get to play one right away and make a zombie. But then we still get to get rid of the Servant for future Servants. So I guess I like that. And I would rather trade off the Burglar than the Diamond Knight since presumably the Diamond Knight's gonna become a bit bigger in the future. Do they have another Undead Servant in hand? Just a Gift of Paradise. Okay, running out the Sailor, since we have Gravedigger to get it back should it die. And now we can exile the Servant. Could have also tried to do something different, where we try and set up for the opposing Sanitarium Skeleton to end up in the graveyard and kill it or exile it with a Necromancer, although that one's difficult to set up if our opponent has uh, 3 mana up. And get in for 1. Alright, so opponent's out of action here, and we still have a lot of powerful grindy cards in hand, plus a Sailor in play which can draw us additional cards. So we're doing pretty well. Can attack with everyone, play a Cloud Seer. Probably still gonna name Black with the Diamond Knights. So we're going wide, we've got uh, some recursion at the ready, should some of our creatures die. And there's a second Undead Servant, not making a zombie, since we exiled the first copy with the Necromancer, Fan Lurker can snipe their last card. It's just a land, and I think I'm okay activating Sailor here. Do I want to attack? Um, don't really want to trade Knight for the Servant. Could trade Necromancer for Servant. Or I could just send a T2 Zombie. Let's play it like this. And I guess I'll activate Sailor now, in case I find another skeleton that I might want to play out. Do I play the Swamp? The reason not to, of course, is Dread Presence. I think I'm okay holding it. If I play it, I guess I could draw another land and then activate Sailor twice. Yeah, maybe that's reason enough. Could have also considered chump attacking with the skeleton into the undead servant just to get it in the graveyard to grow the diamond knight. Picked up another skeleton, so let's play that pre combat. And then we can use Bladebrand as a combat trick to get the diamond knight up to a 4 4 as well. So I think I'm okay attacking with everyone. And 
the logical block for them would be Undead Servant on Diamond Knights. And then we can get them with this uh, Blade Brand. Doesn't matter what we give Death Touch. I guess I'll still target the Diamond Knight in case they have a pump spell. Alright, they did have a pump spell. But it's still just a trade now. Could pump the Fun Lurker, could activate Sailor, could cast Siphon or Gravedigger. Probably just activating Sailor here. And then this can also go upstairs. And there's Dread Presence. Don't think it's going to be necessary. Alright, sweet. So opponent had kind of a medium draw. And we had a pretty good one, with lots of card draw. Alright, 5 on 1, let's keep it up. Another nice opening hand. Skeleton providing the early defense, and then also the late game blocker for large creatures, so it does double duty. We've got a Bone Splinters in the deck as well, and a Blood for Bones to synergize with it, so... Yeah, Skeleton's definitely a card that's at first glance might not seem very powerful, but definitely overperforms. Don't think we need to cantrip with the Blade Brand, since we have a turn 3 and a turn 4 play lined up. All right, let's get in there. And then probably go Island, Cloud Concealer. Hold Fan Lurker until a little bit later in the game. If they have a Convolute, they have a Convolute. Sprite, another Flyer. Opponent with a slower start. And I can still attack with the skeleton given the blade brands. Opponent takes it, and now I can just play Octoprofit instead if we want to. A winged word seems decent. Probably don't need another swamp. And then, still not sure what I'm naming with the Diamond Knight. Usually we have more black cards, blue could be okay here as well. I guess it's kind of an even split at the moment. Although Skeleton coming back from the graveyard means we might have more black spells in the future. So, again, attacking with everyone seems okay. Is there a reason to wing towards pre-combat? Could also Diamond Knight naming black pre-combat, but that's not being very subtle. They are probably blocking the Octoprophet here, and they may or may not have a pump spell, but we don't really care about a pump spell. Uh, block Skeleton. Fine to Blade Brand, I think. If they have a Bounce spell or some other interaction, that's fine. Befuddle. Alright, that's probably one of the best cards they could have had here. Negating the Death Touch. And drawing a card. We still get to draw a card from the Blade Brand, but Skeleton dies and Tracker lives. Opponent fetches up some red mana. Opponent is down to 10 in the meantime, so that's good. And I guess we'll Sprite plus Evolving Wilds, since we kind of need to take to the skies, I think, to close out the game. And Wilds probably just getting a Swamp, but we'll see here. Right, 
spider's pretty good. Now we regret using that blade brand. So we'll need to find dungeon geists or sleep paralysis or bone splinters. We've got some answers. Another blade brand will do nicely. So again, probably just sending everyone. Is it time to like play Diamond Knight pre-combots, naming black? Could have considered playing the land first in case I wanted to blade brand and pump the sprite. Although there's also the Dread Presence consideration. All right, that works out, so don't get punished for uh, not playing the land first. And summon. All right, well, they had all the answers. And the reason they blocked uh, Sprite instead of the Cloudkin is because they didn't want to bounce the Cloudkin to let us draw an additional card. So there was a heads up play. All right, been uh, in a bit of trouble here. Opponent is down to eight. Still have a, lo a lot of card draw in hand, but uh, yeah, there was a setback. So we'll just pass a turn, I think. There are reasons to play out the swamp. We do have a winged wards in hand. We might need the extra mana. But every swamp is so valuable with a dread presence. I'll take two. And we're getting to the point where. We want to deploy the Fun Lurker Sleep Paralysis to answer the spiders nice. So I can do both. Let's Fun Lurker first. Could also deploy the sprites, since if the plan is to paralysis a spider, we probably want to develop the flyers. Um, how much of an issue is the Wake Root Elemental? Not an issue right now. So yeah, I think I'll play the sprites. Elemental now Trampley Boy can just take five and then block Tracker. No attacks and a winged words to refuel. All right, opponent's under quite a bit of pressure. I'll winged words first myself before deciding to Fun Lurker. Bunch of lands. And opponent concedes, so they must not have drawn anything useful. They were taking four damage here, down to two. And then uh, any one of our flyers would have been lethal. Alright, six and one. Another decent opener. We've had a lot of decent opening hands with the deck. Our curve is relatively low. We're not being greedy with our mana. We've got enough early plays to kind of keep pace. And then kind of the grindy late game of Soul Salvage, Gravedigger, Skeleton. Turn to Fun Lurker, difficult decision. Opponent gets rid of a Blind Beetle. Well, not a particularly exciting card to make them exile here. Alright, so... I mean, I could Blade Brand to get rid of the Chaplain, that doesn't seem worth it. Just uh, play Skeleton, say go. Yeah, I guess the Beetle has a bit of a uh, upside against our Diamond Knight, but that's about it. So up against a Black-White Life Gain deck. And Red Presence, a great pickup. So, don't mind playing the guys aggressively here, start attacking. The issue with that play is that the, it leaves us without an answer to a potentially bigger creature or flyer. Although Blade Brand can potentially still solve that issue. Playing Dread Presence without a Swamp isn't ideal. I think I'm down. And God's willing, fair enough. 
actually not too upset about that. So we don't have any good attacks here. But uh, now if the guy dies, it's not unlocking anything from the opponents. There's Aerialist, so that would have been a good target for the Geists. But we still have a Blade Brand. So I can attack with the Geist, play Sprite, keep a Blade Brand. Seems okay. But if they have more life gain synergies, the airless could be bad. Oof, Dread Presence. Well, we've seen lots of Dread Presences in this draft. And the combo with Aerialist is pretty sick as well. Can kill Sprite and make it so we can't Blade Brand to kill Aerialist anymore. So that was uh, a great one for the opponent. So now we have two problems, both Aerialist and the Dread Presence. So I'm probably going to have to trade off the Geists for the Aerialists. I could Blade Brand to kill the Chaplain, but I think we need to keep Blade Brand to kill the Aerialist. Blood for Bones also great once we trade off the Geists. It's going to be a little suspicious if we keep the Geists back, but it technically also blocks Chaplain and Dread Presence, so it's not too suspicious. Don't have any good attacks. I mean, I guess I could attack and then Blade Brand to kill the Dread Presence instead of the Aerialist. Although I think the Aerialist might kill us before the Dread Presence does. They're not guaranteed to have more swamps in hand, but they are guaranteed to smack us in the face for at least four damage. If our opponent has instant speed removal like a murder, we get wrecked. Don't really have a choice, I don't think. So that's one problem dealt with. And we picked up a Swamp for our Dread Presence. So we can make some plays. Blood for Bones can get back the Geist or the Dread Presence if it dies. Looks like our opponent can also get back the Aerialist, perhaps. They're looking at our Graveyard. So far only one creature, so it's definitely possible they, ha they have a Soul Salvage in hand and they're just waiting for a second creature to end up there. Although the Necromancer could mess uh, things up a little bit. So we've got some interesting uh, turns ahead of us. So we could go for the attack. If our opponent blocks, I use Dread Presence to finish off their Dread Presence, but then they Soul Salvage it back. Um, so it could be better to just play a Necromancer first to at least exile the Aerialist. It's also possible they don't have the Soul Salvage in hand, but they passed with six mana up, not doing anything, and they briefly looked at their graveyard. So I'm thinking Soul Salvage is likely. So I think I'm just gonna give up on a little bit of Dread Presence value and run out Necromancer while we can. And then next turn I can make a more convincing attack with everyone. Opponent might be more likely to block with the Dread Presence and then we can use our Dread Presence to take it out. And especially with Soulmanders in the opponent's deck, Aerialist would be quite scary. They seem like uh, they really built around the life gain synergies quite a bit. So that's why the Aerialist is so scary. Alright, so let's go ahead and attack. Probably not sending the Fen Lurker since I don't want to have to pump. But everything else is fair game. It looks like they're saving the Dread Presence for now. Now I'm not forced to play the Dread Presence, I could just play Sailor Draw Card. Which I kinda like, although it does run into the opponent's Dread Presence. Alright, they had their own Blade Brand, makes sense, still a fine exchange. Could also use Dread Presence to finish off their Chaplain. Yeah, playing Sailor into Dread Presence seems bad. So I guess my own Dread Presence plus Swamp finish off Chaplain is the way to go. Killing Chaplain probably more relevant than drawing one card for now.
Yeah, opponent drawing a card. So they probably don't have Soul Salvage in hand since they cast Blade Brand on an empty hand. So our suspicion of Soul Salvage not necessarily founded. Could run out Sailor right now. Get an extra bit of damage in, start drawing cards. Blood for Bones on Dungeon Guys, not really solution to the Dread Presence. It's probably fine. Sleep Paralysis can lock down Dread Presence. I think I'm okay trading Presences, given that we have the Blood for Bones. And then just drawing cards with Sailor instead of locking it down. I could also tank with the Zombie, since if they suspect a Swamp after combat, then they might not block with the Dread Presence. Not sure if it's worth it. I think I'll try it anyway. My opponent just takes it. The play is just going to be to draw cards with Sailor. Could draw now. It's uh, probably okay. Do have some two drops we could draw into. Alright, just play the lands. Since with Sailor in play, we want to have as many lands as possible. Hope they don't have a swamp to take out Sailor. Ooh, forest. And a Molder Vine Reclamation. So that's an, a nice splash card here for a grindy deck. Plays well with the life gain theme as well. But not too effective right now. All right, might just be time to Paralysis, since now with the Reclamation, our opponent might be happy to trade Red Presences, and we don't necessarily want to anymore. But I can just lock it down, draw a card with Sailor, probably draw first, in case that changes our play. Swamp, Swamp, could change our play. I could not attack with the Dread Presence, just send everyone else, play Swamp to finish off Dread Presence. Uh, alternatively, I can do two to their face, still Sleep Paralysis, attack with everyone, which would be four, five, six, seven, eight, plus two. 10 damage, putting them to 3. It's going to make it difficult for them to recover. Unless if like a planar cleansing type effect. In which case they might not have played the reclamation. Don't mind getting aggressive here. Like we could play it slow and just like leverage the sailor. But I don't mind uh, trying to kill the opponent's. And yeah, opponent just packs it in after playing the Vampire, so Sweet managed to rattle off 7-1. Lost the game to Vivian, that happens, Mythics are powerful. But overall our deck performed quite well, had a nice set of commons, drew a Dread Presence often and often in our opening hand as well, so that didn't hurt our chances. And yeah, blue-black, a nice grindy archetype. Usually black ends up being pretty grindy, no matter which color you pair it with. Skeletons, Soul Salvages, Grave Diggers, and a bit of removal is a, a good recipe. Alright, let's crack some packs. Altemsis, still need to try and build a deck around this and construct it. For Limited, obviously also a powerful card. Would probably be my pack one, pick one. God's Willing, Reduce Ashes, fine cards as well. Still haven't really gotten an amazing go wide deck with Raise the Alarm. Hopefully that happens before the format rotates. Corpse Knight, okay, but Black White usually doesn't care all that much about the ability on a Corpse Knight. If it gained life, then it would be a ton better since Black White is usually the life gain synergy deck and this uh, sadly doesn't gain life. And a Thunderkin Awakener, not particularly high pick. Air Elemental on the other hand, definitely a card worth first picking. Ancestral Blade also quite strong. One of the reasons to maybe consider playing white after all. And some okay green cards here as well. Alright. How do I like M20 so far? I really like it. Very interactive format. Games usually go pretty long. Games are pretty grindy. Decisions matter and gets even better in best of three where sideboarding 
comes into effect as well since there's a lot of good sideboard cards in M20. So during the draft, kind of prioritizing those sideboard cards and then being able to use them in sideboarded games is uh, quite relevant as well, as we were able to see in the previous stream where we had a nice uh, best of three drafts where uh, we got to basically use every part of the buffalo in the sideboard with a lot of the sideboard cards coming in clutch. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.